God is doing amazing things, amen. I'm glad to see so many faces here at the Star Conference. I want to welcome you. If you do not know who I am, my name is Mark Morozov. But I believe that God is doing something special here in Florida, amen. But I believe that God is also doing something special in your cities and your towns. And if he's not, I guarantee and I prophesy in the name of Jesus that God is beginning to do a mighty work in Jesus' mighty name. I believe there's a mighty revival coming. Do you believe? I believe that the greatest move of God is about to break out and it's going to break out through every single one of you here now. And I don't know about you, but I don't want to hear about it. I want to be a part of it. I don't want to be a, just someone that watches it. I want to be a participator in Jesus' mighty name. Do you agree with me about that today? Hallelujah. God is a faithful God. And he's moving. He's moving all over the United States. He's moving in China. He's moving in Japan. He's moving in all these different countries. And, and he's looking for a people that would say, God, I'm ready. God, use me. God, fill me in Jesus' mighty name. We see in the Bible many people who encountered God. We see many people who received a word from God, who, who took up that cross and began to follow him day after day. But I want to focus and I want to look at someone specific here today. Those of you that have your Bibles, if you can open your Bibles and turn to the book of Isaiah, chapter 6. And we're going to read verse 8. It says, Then I heard the Lord asking, Whom should I send as a messenger to this people? Who will go for us? I said, Here I am. Send me. Hallelujah. I want you to turn to the person next to you and say, here I am, send me. I want to look at this specifically today. I believe that the Lord wants to speak something to us today here. You know, we had the Star Conference and we've been doing the Star Conference for many years here at Living Stream Church. And I believe it was just the beginning of what God is getting ready to do. Amen. But here we see Isaiah saying, here I am. He opened his heart. He was available for God to use him. There was nobody at that time for God to send as a messenger. And there we see Isaiah say, saying this, these five words that I believe are very powerful and important for every single one of us here today. Here I am, send me. And I want to look at this today. The first thing I want to look at is here I am. And the second thing is send me. The first thing we see is here I am. It shows an availability. Is the fact that Isaiah was available. The second second one we see that there was a sending that was happening there at that time and I believe that this is what God is doing here today amen so we see Isaiah saying the, this this statement here I am I believe that God wants us to be available for him amen I believe that God wants us to be open, ready to receive everything that he has for our lives. Uh, here I am is a, is a place where you stand saying, start God. Come on. It's saying, God, I'm ready, God. I'm available. Take me, God. I, I receive everything you have for me. But availability comes from the place where you're with God, in the presence of God. I believe that we need to hear and know the voice of God today more than we've ever needed it before. I believe that we're living in a time where there's so many voices out there. There's so many things out there that it might distort or redirect you or direct you away from God. The enemy, the Bible says, is like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. He's after every single one of you that are here today. But I believe that God has brought you here. And I believe in the name of Jesus that you're not just here because you're here for a conference. I believe that you're here because you are available for God to use you. Amen. I believe that you're open for God to come in and do whatever that God wants to do. It's a, it's a posture of humility, of humbleness before God saying, God, I might not know, I might not understand, but I'm available I'm ready here I am come on do I have some here I am's available children of God in the house today hallelujah here I am the place with God is above and beyond what many of us know and yet may, maybe you're here today and you you're seeking the face of God there is so much in God that yet we still need to find he said, seek me and you shall find me. Come on, we hear this in church every Sunday. We, we know about this. We might even read about this. But I want to ask you, brothers and sisters, friends here today, 
Do you seek the face of God? Are you truly available? Is it just some words that you speak out of your mouth or is it a posture of your heart? Because God, as the Bible says, is seeking after worshipers in spirit, in truth. Not ones with their mouths, but ones where their hearts are open and ready in truth, in spirit. Come on. I believe that God is getting ready to shake some of us in a new way here today. I believe the Holy Spirit is going to make us available. If you've made it here because somebody has forced you here, if you've made it here because there were different priorities for you to make it here maybe somebody drags you into this place today but I have good news for you dear friends is that God is getting ready to break some things in your life here today and, and I believe we don't need to wait till the sin we we're gonna have it here today now in the name of Jesus and availability God here I am God here I am I might not understand there's so many things we don't understand in Deuteronomy 29, 29, it says we won't understand everything. And the things that are not revealed to us are not for us to understand. You might be sitting here in the pews not understanding why God had allowed some things in your life. You might be upset at God. You might have closed your availability because you don't know. But I have good news for you. Open your heart and become available for God. You don't need to know it all. You don't need to understand it all. You need to be available and say, here I am, God. Do I have some here I am's in the house today? Hallelujah. Father, we are ready. We are available. It's a posture of your heart. A readiness. A readiness for God to come inside. To take you and lead you. Many times we, we start. We have started, but we stopped there. We understand if you confess the Lord with your mouth and believe in your heart, you shall be saved. But that's where we, many times we stop. Friends, there's so much more in Jesus Christ. And the one place it starts with is where it's supposed to start. Many times we jump into the sending before the availability. But it starts with availability. It starts with staying God, here I am. I want to know you. I want to understand you. I want you to fill me, God. The purpose of your life, dear friends, as Matthew chapter 6, verse 33 says, first seek the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness and all else will be given to you. Come on, there's no nothing else. You cannot find purpose in anything else of this world. There's only one that you can find life in and his name is Jesus. There's only one that you can find purpose in, and his name is Jesus. Come on, somebody. His name is Jesus. This name above every other name. Hallelujah. Isaiah said, Lord, here I am. Send me. I believe that there's a sending happening here. Come on. I believe that God is beginning, getting ready to send us out send us out the harvest is plentiful the bible says but the workers are few dear friends you know why the workers are few because not many want to be available not many want to go into the presence of god because they're scared that if they do open their heart and become available that their whole life will be wrecked yes they will be wrecked for the glory of god hallelujah there's nowhere else i'd wreck my life than for jesus christ there's no other place i'd open my life to than this name above all names this name of jesus and i believe that we have some of these hearts here today Today. and I believe that God is getting ready to send you out in Jesus mighty name Jesus came on this earth the Bible says in John 3 16 for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whom shall ever shall believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life hallelujah praise the Lord it's everlasting life we shall not perish but there's something more that is here when Jesus was here and he was walking this earth and and they beat him and they crucified him he sold something to his disciples before this moment he says I have to go it's better if I go but there's going to be someone called the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit is going to come. He's going to be your helper. He's going to be your comforter. He's going to be your teacher. This Holy Spirit, it says he will help you. He will help you to witness. Come on, somebody. He will help you to witness. The Holy Spirit isn't just there to help us from our sins. Come on. He's there to help us witness, to send us out, to be the voice. Jesus always followed the biblical laws. I want you to see something here. When you sow a seed into the ground, an apple seed, what do you get? 
apple tree. Then you get more apples. Jesus sowed himself. He sowed his life. He sowed everything he knew because he knew this one principle that if you sow, you shall reap. And he gave his life as a ransom. He sowed himself so that we can be here today, not be here to play church. Come on. Not be here to sit and feel the tinglings through our body. Not here to open ourselves and say, God, I'm available for you and stop right there. He died for us to be sent out in the name of Jesus. The Bible says in Mark, and I love that this is the Bible school's verse that it says, go, go to the nations, preach the gospel. Jesus died for you to go and start fires wherever you are. He call, he's calling you today. He's sending you out today. He's appointing you. He's anointing you today. Are you available for him to send you out? Jesus, dear friends, his life. When you begin to follow Jesus, you begin to see the purpose of life. When you begin to be sent out by Jesus and walk with Jesus day to day in your jobs, in your workplaces, you don't have to leave everything. You have to leave your sins. The Bible says every high thing that exalts itself above Jesus, above this name, that's what needs to be put down. Maybe there are things that you need to leave in your life today. Dear friends, I want you to leave it here today that you may be empowered and that you may be sent out. Maybe those things are what's stopping you from fully being filled in the glory of God. Jesus said that I've given you the authority to trample on snakes and scorpions. Come on, Let's trample on snakes and scorpions. All those devils that have been coming at you, you have the authority over them. They have been sending you fear. They have been sending you doubt. They have been sending you everything and anything they can. But I have good news for us today. And I want to remind us of this one thing is that he's given you the authority to trample on every snake, every scorpion in the mighty name of Jesus. And I believe that today is our day to take back what the enemy has stolen in the mighty name of Jesus. Those of you that have your Bibles, again, we're going to turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. I'm going to read Paul's little passage here. If anybody was available, Paul was available. If anybody was sent out, Paul was sent out. Paul was sent out in every season of his life. When he built tents, he was sent out. When he was fully in the mission field, he was sent out. When he was on the boat and it's about a shipwreck, he was sent out. Verse 1 says, when I first came to you, dear brothers and sisters, I did not use lofty words and impressive wisdom to tell you God's secret plan. For I decided that while I was with you, I would forget everything except Jesus Christ, the one who was crucified. I came to you in weakness, timid and trembling. And my message and my preaching, come on somebody, I want you to hear this. And my message and my preaching were very plain. Rather than using clever persuasive speeches, I relied only on the power of the Holy Spirit. I did this so that you would trust not in human wisdom but in the power of God. Hallelujah. This is what we need now more than we've ever needed it before. Come on, we need the power of the Holy Spirit. When you become available for God to come on the inside of you, He deposits the power of the Holy Spirit and then nothing shall stand against you and when you lay hands on the sick, they shall be made well. You think maybe you're here today, you don't have the wisdom you don't have the speech you don't have the eloquence you don't have whatever it is that you don't have that might be taunting you and holding you back today but I have good news for you you have something and that's the only thing that you need you have the gospel of the Jesus Christ and him crucified and if you have that you have the power of the Holy Spirit Paul says to the church of Corinthians for the kingdom of God is not of words but in a power and a manifestation of the Holy Spirit come on somebody it's time for the children of God to begin to rise up to take upon this cross to begin to carry it 
and move in the power of the Holy Spirit and take back territory for the glory of God. The devil, it's enough. He's done enough over your friends. He's done enough over your family. He's done enough. It's time to get up. It's time to stop listening and begin to do. Now I'm not saying not listen in general. I'm saying listening as in some of us, all we're doing is sitting there. Although that's good, but it's time to not just sit there with Jesus. My dear friends, it's time to go. It's time to be sent out. And I believe that Jesus is sending us out here today to our jobs, to our cities, to our churches, to the nations of the world. Do you agree with me? I want everybody to stand up right where you're at right now. Hallelujah. Paul said, I don't have all this stuff. I don't, I came with trembling. Come on. I came with fear. He came as he was and God is here today and he doesn't need you to come a certain way. He needs you to come as you are now. Come on. God has made you fearfully and wonderfully made. And I believe we have some people in here today that are saying, God, I want to become available for you today. Or maybe we have some people here that are saying, God, send me out. If that is you and you're in this place, I want you to make your way quickly to the altar because I believe that the Holy Spirit is going to begin to shift something in your life. He's going to begin a work that no man will understand, that nobody, your parents will come to you and ask you what is going on in Jesus' mighty name. Come, come, come. I want you to run. This is not for anybody around. This is for you and Jesus. You want to become available or you want to say, God, I am available for you. Or we have another group of people here today that say, God, send me out in the name of Jesus. Here I am, Lord. Send me in Jesus mighty name come 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 I know there's more people here the Holy Spirit is tugging at your heart right now this is not for anybody here but for you and your life I believe that your life will be changed forever the Bible says that if we make a step before God he will make ten before us come on the Holy Spirit is drawing near right now and the fear I believe is beginning to fall off of you I believe those things that have been hindering you and slowing you down from availability are falling off right now in the name of Jesus Holy Spirit we come as we are in fear in weakness in trembling and God we pray in the name of Jesus send us God send us out to wherever you want us God we are open today we are available today in the name of Jesus come on church I want us to rise our voices rise our voices and I want you to come the Holy Spirit is still working I want you to come get in the in the hallways get get wherever you can get down I want you to open your heart to God he's here right now cry out to him the Holy Spirit we need you we need you God make us available send us send us oh God you're the God
The Holy Spirit is doing something special here right now. I want to pray a prayer with you right now, those of you that are here. And you want to say, God, I want to rededicate my life to you today. Or you want to say, God, I want to dedicate my life. Maybe it's your first time. The Bible says that we confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord and we believe in our heart. We shall be saved. Maybe you're here today you've you realize you've wandered astray from God and you want to restart over today. All eyes closed right now. All eyes closed. And if that is you, I want you to pop your hand right where you're at. Pop your hand. You want to say, that's me. I want to dedicate my life to Jesus once again. And I want you to follow me in this prayer. Father, I confess that I'm a sinner. I confess that you died and you rose again from my sins. I ask you to forgive me of my sins. I ask you to come into my heart and live in me and help me build a relationship with you in Jesus' mighty name. The Bible says that when one sinner comes to repentance, the whole heaven rejoices. Hallelujah. There's a rejoicing in heaven going on right now. Hallelujah. We thank you for what you have done already, God, but we thank you for what's more to come here tonight. Hallelujah. You are worthy of the honor. You are worthy of the praise, God. We exalt you. We honor you. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen.